powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. Dennis Bragg has the night off. We'll get ready for a multi-day snow event in the Northern Rockies that has just begun and it's probably going to last until Saturday. Watch for heavy snow and wind chills in the double digits below zero for some parts of our area. Travel is going to be tough over those mountain passes and throughout the higher terrain tomorrow. The impacts will extend into our valleys by the weekend. We have winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories and winter storm watches all over the place. Chief Meteorologist Erin Yost had a very busy day in the Storm Tracker Weather Center and she's tracking all the latest information for us. Erin. Yeah, things are going to stay busy here over the next couple of days too because we're going to be watching this fine line, this area where a boundary will set up. And whether or not that wavers north to south will dictate how much some of us actually pick up as far as accumulation and almost what form it might come in. Hamilton, one place you can see here on a first security bank eye cam today seeing snow. Uh, one place though that we might be talking a rain snow mix come the next couple of days. Right now the focus shifting across the Bitterroot Valley, but we are continuing to watch this potent system just take shape across the region, bringing with it obviously significant snow, but uh, challenging if not impossible travel conditions. More details coming up. The death of a Florida man in Glacier National Park is believed to be from natural causes. Authorities say a park dispatcher received a call from a commercial guide yesterday afternoon that a client had collapsed while on a guided snowshoe walk along Fish Creek Road. Park rangers responded they continued CPR that already was underway by the guide. Three Rivers Ambulance and Alert Air Ambulance also responded. Efforts to resuscitate the visitor were unsuccessful. He was a 64-year-old man who was visiting the park from Miami, Florida with family. Authorities released the name of the woman who died in a two-vehicle crash that shut down U.S. Highway 93 near Ravalli for several hours yesterday. Lake County Sheriff Don Bell says 65-year-old Janet Harmson of Polson died in this head-on crash near the intersection of North Valley Road. That's at the south end of the S-curves going into Ravalli. Two others involved in the crash were taken to St. Patrick Hospital in Missoula. Their conditions are unknown. MHP says everyone involved was wearing their seatbelts Alcohol and drugs are not suspected as a factor. A 62-year-old Libby woman is accused of shooting and killing her husband earlier this month. Lincoln County Sheriff's officials responded to a 911 call from Connie Leckrone that her husband had accidentally shot himself in their home. 69-year-old Dean Leckrone was found dead with a single gunshot wound to the head in a bedroom closet. In court documents, Sheriff's officials say Connie Leckrone led them to believe that her husband shot himself, but then they say she mumbled, I shot him during a recorded interview at the sheriff's office while she was alone in the room. They also claim they have her on video trying to wash her hands, they believe, in an attempt to remove any gunshot residue. Connie Leckron is now being held in the Lincoln County Detention Center on a charge of murder and tampering with evidence. Her next court appearance is scheduled for early next month. New tonight, nobody was hurt after a train collided with a semi truck in Frenchtown tonight. The Frenchtown Rural Fire District reporting that the semi got stuck with its front end across the tracks at Ducharme Crossing behind Benny's. The train pushed the semi into a Montana railing maintenance building. The power company has been notified. MRL officials are on the scene. Both the Ducharme and Mullen Road crossings are closed. Traffic is being rerouted. Once the locomotive has been checked, the crossings will be cleared. Olympian and Whitefish native Maggie Voison is home for the holidays, taking a short break from her Olympic qualifying events at Whitefish Mountain Resort. She is scheduled to compete in several events, including the X Games, before she heads off to Pyeongchang for the 2018 Winter Games. Tomorrow from 1 until 2.30, she'll be skiing with fans on Big Mountain, followed by an autograph signing. That is free and open to the, uh, the public, and Maggie will be skiing laps on Chair 2 on the front left side of the mountain. In Sochi, Boysen was set to become the youngest U.S. athlete to compete at the Winter Olympics since 1972, just two months after turning 15 years old. But she fractured her right fibula in practice on the opening day of the Games. It can be challenging for parents to find child care around the holidays, but Kalispell's Parks and Rec is helping those parents out. MTN's Jack Ginsburg shows us how. 
Kalispell Parks and Recreation run an after-school program throughout the school year, but they also have special camps for weeks like this when parents may be at work and their kids have no school. It's about two and a half hours after school program. This one's about 10 hours. So it's a lot different. There's a lot more activities planned. Mostly we do field trips just to get them out. One of those field trips that the kids got to do Wednesday was a tour of the Kalispell Fire Department to see a day in the life of a firefighter. Kalispell Fire Department paramedic Doug Schwartz says it's nice to make a connection with the youth in the valley. Just kind of allows us to make a connection with kids that uh, that's hard to do, you know, as, as people get busy and older and, and things aren't as interesting to, to people anymore. Kids are really fascinated by the fire trucks in the station and the, and the people here and so it's kind of nice to, to capitalize on that excitement. Not only do the firefighters let the kids play with their toys, but they teach them about fire safety as well. We like to, to leave them with a good uh, message for fire safety just to kind of get that seed planted in their heads that um, hopefully down the road, you know, kind of kind of keeps them thinking about the things they do being safe and, and preventing the things that are easily preventable. And the fun didn't stop there at the fire department today. The kids came back here to Elrod Elementary to have lunchtime and some recess in the gym before heading outside to have a snowman making competition. During weeks like this, Boyd says it's nice that the camp can give some parents a bit of relief while they are at work. Everyone tries to get off for the holidays, and when they can't, it's just really special that we have a program like this to help people like that, because it's really difficult to find stuff like childcare during the holidays. And not only is it convenient for parents, but a great experience for the kids as well. I think that they just really enjoy being able to have a free time away from parents and all that family stuff, and they, it really makes it a lot better environment when there's a lot more kids and the kids are just way happier. They listen better. It's awesome. I think they really enjoy it. In Kalispell, Jack Ginsburg, MTN News. And that program continues through the week. Well, it's the kind of weather out there when he does love nothing more than curling up in front of the fireplace with a good book. And for the first time in decades, Missoula's book lady is doing just that, likely reading to her grandkids. Dennis Bragg shows us the next chapter for Barbara Thoreau. She's been technically gone for six months of fact and fiction, but there's a book lover spirit which Barbara Thoreau shared that will always be in stock on these shelves, even with her decision to retire. And I wanted to, as I was still healthy, still loved what I was doing, saying now's the time, now's the time to transition. And I was fortunate enough to have some people that I could train and know that the store was going to stay and, and have a lot of the same programs, a lot of the same energy, and it was, it was all timing. <laughs> Barbara may be off on her own now, but you just can't imagine her without a book in her hand, a recommendation on the latest Northwest author, and always, always advocating for reading. I'll be working with the library project, and that's I, so I tell people my book passion will now go there, and work with the Montana Book Festival, the Montana Book Award, and the Roxy. Uh, you know, Roxy's now in my neighborhood, and it's just really nice to see some of those things happen. For more than 30 years and over a 40-year career, Barbara did her best to build connections between writers and readers, bringing authors like Sherman Alexi, Rick Bass, Ivan Doig, James Lee Burke, and Tim Egan to Missoula. Visits chronicled in an amazing collection of photos and other keepsakes. But it was a little serious about a young wizard that was the most remarkable thing she saw over those years. J.K. Rowling did so much for reading for books, for young people being excited about a book, for the publishing industry realizing they could publish in the summer, that people would buy a 500-page book, that people would come out at midnight so they could start reading it. Um, that was great. And, you know, that helped us get out of one of those recessions as far as people saying, oh, no, reading doesn't matter anymore. It does matter. And I had to ask her what her best advice is for aspiring authors. Start figuring out who's doing what, what do you like about what's going on. You don't necessarily have to go to school to learn all that, get some common sense about things. Do your research. It worked for her and that little bookstore on Higgins. I said, I'm going to do the research until I get a red light. And I didn't get any red lights. You know, I might have had some caution signs. <laughs> But the red lights weren't there. I had a dream, and Missoula allowed me to have it build into what it is. Uh, I couldn't have done it without readers. I couldn't have done it without press, with authors, with just all the many factions that made it all come together. And that's what I am most proud of. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Barbara has some aspirations to start a book blog at some point, but this Christmas she's spending time with her grandkids in New Jersey for the first time in years, and we bet she's reading to them.
Well, still ahead, Aaron has details on the serious snow headed our way and the potentially dangerous travel conditions, too. And from hurricanes to wildfires to mass shootings, 2017 was one year. We'll take a look back at some of the top national stories coming up on KPEX.